windfall. Is it still a forest if you cut all the trees down? What? He exclaimed and then tried to turn his exclamation into a cough, apologetically covering for the error. I'm sorry, Magistrate. I- I'm not sure I understand. Abraham rubbed the bridge of his nose. There's literally no one that can vote. Merlo's hardly going to hold an election if nobody can vote, is he? He's a stickler for the rules, but even he's not going to waste his time with that. No, Magistrate. I mean, yes, Magistrate, that's my understanding. Merlo's office are informing us that they do not intend to hold an election, as there's nobody who can vote. He hoped this was the end of the matter. He wasn't sure why he was feeling nervous about this. It wasn't like it was his fault. Merlo's right, but it's rather more complicated than that, I fear. If there's no one who can vote, if no election can take place, is there really a title there? Can you have a forest without any trees? Does that matter, Magistrate? He asked, pensively. Of course it bloody matters. It makes all the difference in the world. The old magistrate reached to his desk, extracted a small purple book from the piles of tomes and manuscripts that were scattered everywhere. He opened it, smiled briefly at the dedication, and then began flicking through it, completely ignoring his assistant. A minute went by before he spoke again. Will of the nation, muttered Abraham slowly to himself, tapping the book for emphasis. Simeon waited another minute, but it was becoming painfully clear that Magistrate Abraham was engrossed in the book and had completely forgotten he was there. Three years at the academy training for this, he thought bitterly. Overview Thanks to the treaty between Salt Lord Caliact and the Imperial Senate, the Wolves of War have been able to take control of Spiral in a single season. In return for this extraordinary gift, Caliact demanded the right for her and her supporters to join the League. The Imperial Senate agreed to the treaty in principle, but the decision of whether the Apulian Orcs can join the Empire does not lie with the Senate. Legally, citizenship can only be granted by an egregore. To see if that's possible, the League egregores Harlequin and Inamorata have been busy talking to League citizens about the Grendel, sharing what they know and considering if there really is a home for these audacious Orcs in the League. They've been talking to the Apulians themselves, all in the interest of deciding whether or not it's possible for them to join. In theory, this is no different to any individual who seeks to join a nation. But with so many orcs looking to join, the decision is unusually important. It seems they plan to make a final decision on the matter on Saturday during the coming summit. Whatever the outcome, the Empire will have to come to some accommodation with these newest citizens. The wheels of state are turning, and the Imperial Senate will need to decide how to deal with the consequences of regaining Spiral in such an unprecedented way. A question of loyalties. Sentiments in the League are divided, so the issue of the Apulians joining the League will be decided at this summit. The League egregores will canvass opinions from citizens at Anvil before making their final decision on Saturday. Once the final decision is made, it cannot be reversed without unimaginable cost. Harlequin and Enamorata. The League egregores visit Spiral regularly throughout this time, talking to the Apulians and weighing them up. They're in pursuit of two very important questions. Who actually genuinely wants to join the League? And perhaps more importantly, should they be allowed to join? The central question of can they join the League is left for later. As Harlequin explains, it's much better to decide if we really want them to join and then see if the magic works rather than the other way around. Almost all of Kaliak's followers are fully committed, but even beyond her immediate circle of allies, there's no shortage of orcs expressing an interest in becoming part of the League. It is clear to everyone that Kaliak has the upper hand, and those who believe things will stay that way are keen to get ahead. Not everyone feels the same. The bulk of folk living in Apulian prefer to wait a little while first. After all, the Grendel controlled this entire territory a few weeks ago, so clearly the situation is fluid and can change quickly. Best not to buy a ship until the writers corked it, more than a few Apulians say. 
The egregores also spend a great deal of time talking to citizens in the League, weighing the fate of the Apulians as they do. A big part of this is trying to judge how welcome the orcs might be. The decision of the folk at Anvil seems clear enough, but it's not so obvious that the people of Sarvos feel the same way about the barbarians who occupied their city. It's not a matter of a vote, really. But the egregores are keen to talk to people about what they've seen in Spiral and what it might mean for them. Their verdict, for what it's worth, is that the Apulians have a lot in common with the people of the League. They're ambitious, certainly, and competitive, and in that sense they fit right in. They're every bit as ruthless as the Temeshwari, as demonstrated by Kaliak's willingness to renounce the salt lords of Duftraig and throw her lot in with the Empire. They don't have the same appreciation for art and fashion as the average Sarvosan, but they certainly match their hunger for the finer things in life. They share the Tassartan love of intrigue and they can be as pragmatic and ingenious as any Holberger. On the face of it, the Apulians could walk into any city in the League and fit right in, which is good because some of them are already asking questions about moving to other cities in the League, even before they've been accepted as citizens. One problem that's been identified is that of the Grendel religion. The Apulians have asked the Imperial Synod to give them a ruling on the differences between their faith and the way, which they hope will settle matters. It doesn't seem to occur to them that their religious beliefs might be a real problem, partly because they seem unable to comprehend that the Empire might let such things get in the way, but mostly because they don't seem unduly attached to their faith. The Egregores get the distinct impression that Kaliakt and her allies simply don't lose a lot of sleep worrying about whether audacity is a real virtue or not. One rather telling conversation that the Harlequin recounts is with a Grendel, who put changing their religious beliefs to join the League in the same breath as having to change some of their clothing if they join the League. They wear their faith lightly, might be the politest way to describe it. The only real worry holding Enamorata and Harlequin back is a question of loyalties. Loyalty is central to the League. It is the stone and the steel that holds the cities together. The issue is raised more than once by many of the League citizens that the Egregores talk to. If the Apulians just betrayed their fellow Salt Lords, then can they really be trusted? It's a fundamental question, and one that the Egregores feel can only really be resolved by their fellow citizens talking to the Apulians themselves. Kaliakt and her key supporters have indicated that they plan to attend the summit. So it seems that it's the best place to settle that question. If they can convince the smartest people in the League that they hold their loyalties as dearly as any League citizen, then that's good enough for the Egregores. Having made that decision, Harlequin and Inamorata let people know the issue will be settled once and for all at Anvil at the coming summit. They don't fully agree with each other on whether it's a good idea or not, which is probably a fair approximation of how the average League citizen in the street feels. Delaying to the summit means there's a final opportunity for the movers and shakers of the League to talk to the Apulians and to the Egregores to decide once and for all if they still want to go ahead with this plan. After all, there's no turning back from a decision like this. The Power of Names Kaliakt wishes to change the name of the territory to Apulian. Her people have begun to refer to themselves collectively as Apulians. A Senate motion would be required to acknowledge an official change of name for the territory of Spiral. Officially changing the name will be a powerful symbol of the transfer of Spiral from Urizen to the League. Salt Lord Kaliakt has made it clear that they want the name of the territory to be changed to Apulian. They're content to be flexible on religious issues, but they are surprisingly forceful on this point. They make a number of points to explain why this is so important. Firstly, every League territory is named for the city at its heart. Their territory has joined the League, ergo it must employ the same naming convention. Apulian cannot stand as a League city to rival the others unless its name demonstrates that it is equal in stature. Furthermore, changing the name indicates that this is no longer Spiral. The change of name reflects its new nature as a territory of the League. Kaliak's allies have already stopped referring to themselves as Grendel. Sometimes they refer to themselves as League Orcs, but mostly they just call themselves Apulian. They point out that calling them Grendel suggests that it is where the real loyalties must lie to the Grendel and the Salt Lord councils that rule them. If the Empire wishes to accept their city into the League and the Apulian Orcs into the Empire, then everyone should put aside old names and embrace the future. 
Whatever happens, people are going to call the territory Spiral for years to come. All the maps the Empire has painstakingly made are not going to change overnight, but it would require a Senate motion to officially change the name of the territory in the Imperial Archives. If that happens, the records will be updated over time and the new name will gradually replace the old. If the territory doesn't end up with the same name as the city, it appears that Kaliakt and her followers are going to view it as a considerable and intentional slight. If the name of the territory is changed to Apulian, then it will be taken as a clear sign by those or as any who currently live in the territory that the door is firmly closed on any hope that the territory might someday become part of their nation again. The Spoils of Diplomacy The Imperial Senate has determined that Spiral will become part of the League. The Senate must still decide what is to become of the Legacy. At present, the civil service have not yet been able to complete a census of Spiral to determine who lives there and what resources they possess. That process has now begun, but it will take at least another season to complete. That means that taxation will be delayed, but it also affects key political issues such as who is elected senator. If post grendel Spiral holds any opportunities for the Empire to exploit, then it will take the civil service some time to identify them. The Senate could use an appraisal to speed up that process, otherwise they will have to be patient. The one opportunity that everyone is certain of is the Legacy, the great mithril mine situated in Ossuary. At the moment, that's technically under the control of Salt Lord Kaliakt, the jewel in her crown, so to speak. She understands that it will need to be surrendered to the Empire for the Senate to dispose of, and her people are keen to be involved in any discussions of how it is to be allocated. Senator for Spiral. Currently, there's not a single League business owner living anywhere in the territory of Spiral. The civil service will hold the election at the next summit, the autumn equinox, provided there is an electorate by then. League citizens can now move to the territory and new League characters can begin play in the territory. Imperial law means that no citizen can vote for a senator if they were eligible to vote for any other senator in the last 12 months. Salt Lord Kaliak has indicated that she will not be standing for senator, but the Apulian Orcs do intend to put forward a candidate of their own. The civil service confirm that there's not a single League business owner living in the territory of Spiral during the period leading up to the summer solstice. Therefore, no election can take place at this time, as there's no electorate. There's literally not one single citizen who can cast a single legal vote. The only people who might conceivably have qualified are Kaliak's allies, almost all of whom control businesses, assuming that they're allowed to join the nation. However, since the Egregore has wisely perhaps not accepted them into the nation at this time, they don't qualify for any votes in the election. As a result, the civil service plan to schedule the election for the autumn equinox. They anticipate that this will allow time for at least some citizens to become legally eligible to vote. If that doesn't happen, which does seem unlikely, they will have to delay the election for another season. Any League citizen can now move their personal resource to Spiral in the usual way. There is, however, a significant legal ruling that will limit many citizens from voting straight away. By imperial law, no citizen may vote in an election that is restricted in some way if they were eligible to vote in an equivalent but different election in the last 12 months. This means that any League citizen who owns a business in Sarvos will be ineligible to vote in an election in Spiral until summer 386 YE. Those from Holberg cannot vote here until spring 386 YE, and those from Temeshwa cannot vote here until winter 385 YE. Business owners from Tosato, who move now, would be eligible to vote when the election is held at the autumn equinox. Next year, the re-election of the Senator for Spiral will take place normally at the summer solstice, on the anniversary of the day the territory joined the nation. That means that any citizen who moves their business to the territory now will be eligible to vote when the title is re-elected. Those who delay may face the same problem in the future. Somewhat perversely, this restriction only affects League citizens with businesses or citizens in other nations who can vote in their senatorial elections. If a citizen leads a congregation in Savos, they can purchase a business in Spiral for two crowns by arrangement with the civil service and vote normally in the forthcoming elections. 
It's an odd law, but Merlot, the overseer of imperial elections, points out that it exists to prevent citizens from moving from one territory to the next, openly voting for a senator each time. Citizens who haven't been attending Anvil previously are also not affected. Any new character who comes to Anvil at this summit or on the run-up to the next will be eligible to vote in the elections if they possess a business in the territory. Those Apulian orcs who are accepted by the Egregor who own businesses, which is a significant number of them, will be eligible to vote in the elections at the Autumn Equinox if they attended Anvil. Salt Lord Kaliak has indicated that she does not intend to stand herself but has asked the civil service to let the people know that her allies do intend to put a candidate up for the position. The Legacy The Legacy is available for the Imperial Senate to allocate at any time. The Senate can use a motion to allocate the Legacy as Imperial or League-owned. If the Legacy is allocated in the Friday Senate session, then it can be appointed on Saturday. The Apulians have requested a season's delay to ensure that the territory has a senator who can speak on the matter. If the resource has not been allocated, then any mithril will accumulate and be auctioned with the seat when it's available. Imperial forces have secured the Legacy, an important boss resource that provides 22 wanes of mithril each season. No citizen can be elected to oversee operations until the Imperial Senate decides on whether the seat will be Imperial or National. If the seat is declared to be an imperial seat, then it'll be open to any citizen by auction to the highest bidder. If the seat is national, it must be a league seat, and it will be elected by their preferred method. In this case, auction to the highest bidder from the league. Kaliak's people have politely requested that it would be fairer for the Imperial Senate to wait one season before the issue is settled. That would give the territory a time to arrange a senator, which would help them to have some say in how the assets in the territory are disposed of. They also point out that the mithril produced by the legacy is vital to the inhabitants of the territory, since it's needed to provide an effective defence against the corrosive influence of the Black Plateau. If it is allocated as an imperial position now, it'll be a free-for-all, and all the occupants of Spiral will suffer as a result. If there is a delay, or if the resource was made national, it would give the Apulians time to discuss the matter with the Urizen, to see if they could collaborate on a bid to ensure the mithril produced benefited both nations. If the legacy is not allocated, then the mithril that is produced there this season will be kept on hand and given to the first successful citizen who's appointed the title. On the other hand, if the legacy is allocated on Friday, then it can be appointed on Saturday, in either case. It will be appointed again at the Autumn Equinox, since all Mithril seats are elected at this season. Balagadra and the Apulian Palace There are two fortifications in Spiral which the Imperial Senate is now responsible for maintaining. In each case, the majority of their garrison for the fortification is made up of Apulian Orcs. A final consequence of Spiral becoming part of the League is that the two fortifications commissioned by the Grendel, apparently with assistance from Yarmish magicians, are now under the auspices of the Imperial Senate. The Treasury will begin paying for them the following summer solstice. At the moment, the garrisons of both fortifications are predominantly made up of Apulian orcs, although negotiations are underway to bring in more human citizens of the League to work alongside them. It's likely that by the end of the year, both Balagadra in the north and the Apulian Palace in the city itself will be guarded by a mixture of orcs and humans, assuming the question of the orcs joining the League is settled. Should things go awry before the end of the winter solstice, there's a good chance that the soldiers there could use them as a base of operations to fight against the Empire, especially if the Grand Orcs were to invade. The only way to seize them would to be reconquer the regions containing the forts. Apulian and Anvil A number of Apulian orcs are planning to attend the Anvil Summit. A second group will arrive on Saturday afternoon to learn the outcome of the discussion regarding their becoming citizens. A contingent of Apulian orcs are intending to attend the Anvil Summit for the first time as potential citizens. They're expected to arrive on Friday and are intending to camp with their future fellow citizens in the League. A second group is expected to visit Anvil on Saturday afternoon, including Salt Lord Kaliakt, who will arrive on Saturday afternoon to learn whether they are being accepted as League citizens. If they are, the expectation is that Kaliakt and all the Apulian orcs attending Anvil will take the Egregor bond. Participation Players cannot create Apulian orc characters and cannot play humans raised among the Grendel at this time. 
It's not possible for players to create a Pudan Orc characters, not least because the question of whether these Orcs can become part of the League hasn't been answered. Likewise, it's not possible to create a human character who was raised among the Grendel of Apulian. It is acceptable to have a new League character who's moved to Apulian from one of the other cities, but there will be no additional briefing material available about what Apulian or its citizens are like beyond what's already on the wiki.